It's another protest day. And the battle lines are drawn. I'm here just feeling furious. Hong Kong's bitter voices, millions of them, taking on the government in march after march. To stand firm and understand how, how important democracy and freedom really is. A government they see as uncaring for the plan they call evil. And it's ignited a fear far deeper than anything this place has felt in a long time. Fear of China. One of those voices is Denise Ho. The anger and the frustration and all this disappointment, it has always been our, in our hearts. She's fierce on the street. <laughs> familiar on the music charts. Ho is not just a protester, but a canto pop star in Hong Kong, <laughs> whose songs have included several protest anthems that provided the soundtrack to Hong Kong's umbrella movement five years ago. As it turns out, Ho grew up in Montreal. For me, Canada is you know, another home. So uh, I think what I have learned there, I am applying it right now here in Hong Kong. That education that I got, you know, that people should be independent and free and we should have our own rights, that has made a very great impression on myself. And she's making an impression here. But pop stars aren't the only ones driving this people power. It's been a remarkable coalition. Brokers from Hong Kong's financial towers, mothers from the outskirts, unions and churches. Millions of people joining the angry young men and women who've been the traditional foot soldiers for Hong Kong democracy. Those students are here too, of course, right on the front lines, ready to confront the police, getting bruised, shot and gassed in return in ways Amnesty International calls excessive force. By far, most protesters have been peaceful, and by far, they sympathize with the students. But they are very brave. We are so proud of them because the students are standing at the front line. Gary Chu is a high school teacher. Like many Hong Kong teachers, he's been at all the protests with his family arguing against the extradition bill, which he fears will allow anyone in Hong Kong to be extradited to China to face its harsh and arbitrary justice system. His students fear it too, and he's seeing them take a much more assertive role in challenging authority because of that. They need to. <laughs> they need to keep this uh, special status of Hong Kong. I think they want to live when they will be grown up. They want to live in a city that uh, you have uh, the freedom of speech and the freedom from fear. And he says there's a lot at stake for the rest of the world too in dealing with China. Hong Kong is now becoming a battlefield between an authoritarian state and the rest of the free world. We want to let the international society know that when if Hong Kong is collapsed, when one is enslaved, all are not free. So the international society, please keep Hong Kong as it was. Hong Kong has been gradually losing its freedom since China took over 22 years ago. Opposition voices have been silenced or jailed, protests limited, and foreign reporters kicked out. All this despite a pledge by Beijing to respect its more democratic system. Now even business is condemning the proposed law. Corporate groups and small companies are normally reluctant to criticize the government about anything here. This time some, including Lai Chun Kit, joined the call for a strike, closing his web design company one day to allow staff to protest. Why lose business? It's not the time to count how much we lost, but how much we can do for our home. So uh, we decide to shut down our business on that day. And uh, we have also told our clients uh, we will join the strike. He says for some business people, attitudes may be changed for good. 
I think if the China uh, China government continues to impose any law in Hong Kong, uh, we will become more aggressive. That may happen if the proposed extradition law is revived, or it may wait for the next attempt for Chinese laws to reach into Hong Kong. But it seems pretty clear protests here are no longer limited to small numbers, narrow interests, or quiet voices. Sasha Petrusik, CBC News, Hong Kong.